Okay, wonderful. We'll jump in here. Um, again, good morning, everyone, um, and thank you, Eric, very much for inviting us and hosting this webinar. Uh, my name is Holly Ringe, and today I'm pleased to present an overview of our community-based science program called Urban Tides. And this is a program where you can help document the impacts of rising sea levels on our beach communities. And this data is used to help ground truth new sea level rise models that project areas that are vulnerable to flooding and erosion. And briefly, for those of you not familiar with Sea Grant, there are 33 Sea Grant programs around the country in each of the coastal and Great Lakes states. We are part of NOAA, and we're also partners with the states and universities where we're located. And I like to describe our mission this way. We connect science to local communities to help solve some of our most pressing ocean problems. And we do this in several ways. We fund research, and our focus here in Los Angeles with millions of people living next to the sea is funding research that's relevant to the urban ocean, so issues that include water quality, invasive species, sustainable seafood, sea level rise. Um, and then we ensure that those results and the research benefit our communities and are used by coastal managers um, through communication and outreach programs that we have here. We're also a regional platform for increasing science literacy among urban students and encouraging teachers to adopt science curricula. And we provide scientific and technical assistance to local governments. And finally, the point I want to make here is that science is a resource for everyone. And public investments in science, federal funding in science, and research is valuable. It fuels economic development, environmental stewardship, and the responsible use of our ocean resources. So what is Urban Tides? Urban Tides is a community-based science effort to photo document tidal lines, flooding, and erosion that's happening now along our coast. We're collecting images to visualize the flooding risk from future sea level rise. And we ask folks to go to the beach and take photos of king tide, beach erosion, and flooding. We have specific data collection protocols to follow so that scientists can determine the water level from the photos. And they use this information to help ground truth sea level rise models for the region. And these are new models that predict where flooding will occur, how deep, and how long it may last due to the combination of sea level rise and coastal storms. And in this way, communities began to identify what areas are vulnerable to the impacts of sea level rise. Because even today, with El Nino, winter storms, and king tide, these things offer us a glimpse of what those impacts will look like in our communities. And I'll just briefly mention for those that may not be familiar with king tide, this is an extreme, extreme high tide. It happens a few times a year based on the position of the moon. They're predictable. And a good way to consider this is that the water levels that we see with king tide today, this will be what normal high tides look like with sea level rise. And it's interesting to note that El Nino that we just had this season temporarily raised sea levels to what we expect to see in 25 years with sea level rise. So again, urban tides is just as simple as snapping a photo while you're at the beach. And what's cool about it is that you're sharing your information directly with scientists and community leaders. And I'll explain how this program works in a bit. But first, I just wanted to provide the context for what we're talking about here. And sea level rise in Southern California is expected to match the global projection with an increase of 5 to 24 inches by mid-century. And in fact, research just published by U.S. Geological Survey and others says that just 4 to 8 inches of sea level rise, which again is expected in the next 30 years, will more than double the frequency of seriously serious flooding events um, in many parts of the world, including along the California coastline. And the impacts of sea level rise include flooding, damage to infrastructure like roads and sewage treatment plants, shoreline changes such as erosion of beaches and cliffs, and the loss of habitat for wildlife and human uses. And as you can imagine, sea level rise will also have a large socioeconomic impact as well. And to illustrate this, what we mean when we're talking about the impacts of sea level rise, in Southern California, we're not just talking about sea level rise. It's sea level rise in combination with the high tides and storms, the waves and the surge, that will cause the most damage. So if you look at this graphic, 
The blue lines here represent current sea level, and then the elevated water level that we see with tides and storms. And you can see how much further the water comes up the beach here. And the red line represents sea level rise at mid-century, and then with what tides and storms elevating that sea level even more. So in addition to sea level rise and flooding, right, this will expedite many of the natural processes that already occur, such as the beach loss and cliff erosion. So essentially, elevated sea levels means elevated risk. And I'm a visual person, so I wanted to provide examples of what this looks like. This is low tide at Doheny State Beach in Dana Point earlier this year. And this is where the river outflows, and this is where a lot of surfers come right off this jetty here. Um, we notice that there's people walking on the beach. There's a lot of sand here. This is three days later during a king tide, and I believe it had rained the day before. And this is a dramatic contrast. This is a lot of water here. So low tide, king tide. And just one more visual, this is San Diego King Tide, and you'll notice that the coastal armoring is here to protect the home. So what's interesting is that this isn't enough. The flooding is coming up into the parking lot behind the home, as you can see right here. Okay, so why do we want pictures of these things now? Why does it matter? Planning for the impacts of sea level rise has become a priority for many coastal communities. And visualizing today's risk enables us to identify where the vulnerable locations and people are. It provides critical data to help ground truth and calibrate the models that city planners are using um, to help set priorities. Where are they going to allocate resources? It also helps to further the dialogue about how we can adapt to rising seas. So this is how urban tides works. We ask folks to go to the beach and take photos of king tides, low tides, erosion, flooding, and we've tried to make it really simple to participate. The first step is to join the online database. And we've designed it to be user-friendly and fit the needs of this project. Once you join the database, you can start contributing photos. And you can take photos with a smartphone or a regular camera. You can upload photos into the database via the website. So we prefer if you have a smartphone, that you use an app that was specifically developed for this project. And the app captures all of the critical information that we need about each photo. And this helps ensure data accuracy. So scientists need five pieces of information with each photo. Latitude, longitude, date, time, and orientation, so which direction you're facing. Also helpful is anything interesting you notice at the location, for example, if there's sand that's come up into the parking lot or sand burns that are half eroded, the app captures all of this information with just a few clicks. And if you don't use the app, then please write down all of this information when you take the picture and there are instructions on how to do this on our website. And another way that we ensure data accuracy is through photo taking protocols. And they were developed for urban tides by scientists at the U.S. Geological Survey. And this is really important to follow so that the scientists can determine the water level from the photos. So when you're taking a picture, find the high water line on the sand, and then take two steps landward of that high water line, about one meter. Take the photo facing parallel to the shoreline, not directly out of the ocean. Include a structure or a feature that gives perspective like a pier, jetty, breakwater, or a building. And ideally, take the photo as the wave hits that high water line. And we're not just interested in beaches. We also need estuaries, wetlands, lagoons, and cliffs. And everyone who joins the database has access to all of the entries and can download photos and their associated data. And this is an example of what the database looks like. You can search for information by location and some other parameters. OK, so your observations matter. We work very closely on this project with partners at the US Geological Survey, Scripps Institution of Oceanography, Hill the Bay, the Bay Foundation, as well as cities like Santa Monica, Long Beach, San Diego, and some other ones. <clears throat> the program is designed for individual participation However, it can also very easily be incorporated into existing programs 
like beach cleanups and monitoring efforts, uh, scouts and birding. Okay, so we launched Urban Tide in 2015. It's been essentially two data collecting seasons. We have now 860 photo records, 160 contributors, and we have geographic coverage from Santa Barbara all the way down to the Tijuana Estuary, which is pretty cool. Um, we've identified, or scientists have identified 239 locations where they would really love photos from. And we have an interactive map on our website where you can see exactly where those are. And within those, they've identified 30 locations that are a priority. Uh, we've conducted nine community beach walks, and I'll talk about these a bit more in a second. And because I'm a communicator, I love to count things like blogs and videos and media stories as well. And these are just some of the impacts that we can have so far. So our coastline is changing, and we're documenting it. So images are being used to ground truth, sea level rise models, and I'll talk about the USGS Cosmos model on the next slide. Images are being used for erosion research and research about El Nino. We coordinated a data collection um, event with USGS, NASA, and JPL, a radar flight back in November. And this radar flight was collecting imagery of the Southern California coast. Um, we coordinated 50 urban tide participants to be on the ground at various locations during the flight, taking photos. And these images provided on-the-ground comparisons with what the radar imagery was showing them. And this is invaluable, and it's helping them to calibrate their models. And this one effort generated 250 records. Uh, additionally, the Sea Grant programs in Hawaii and Florida have also adopted and adapted urban tides for their region. OK, so this is how the images are being used by the US Geological Survey. And scientists have created a modeling system called COSMOS, which is the Coastal Storm Modeling System, that predicts where flooding will occur how deep the flooding will be, and how long the flooding will last due to the combination of sea level rise and coastal storms. And this is a unique modeling system. It predicts the hazard for 40 combinations of sea level rise at different levels, different meters, essentially, uh, and different severities of coastal storms. And the projections are scaled down to the local level, so that they're usable by local municipalities. Um, and the results includes you know, flooding, quick erosion, shoreline changes to beaches. Um, this is an example of what one of the flood maps looks like uh, in Long Beach here. Uh, so the, the, the maps are used by local leaders um, to help know who's vulnerable, what roads or power plants are vulnerable. And then they can set priorities to help plan strategies to adapt. Uh, on the left here, again, is the Cosmos model. And then you can see one of the urban tides records on the right. Uh, and they can pinpoint exactly where the record was taken and, and see if it matches what their models are telling them. OK. And other research uh, at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, they're also using these photos um, for extreme events like El Nino and storms. And photos have helped identify coastal erosion and infrastructure damage. In particular, they use them to cross-reference um, to help confer regions of damage that they've observed in aerial flights as well. And Linda Chilton, um, who's our Education Programs Manager here at Sea Grant, she helps lead Urban Tides. And she's expanded the impact of the program tremendously by integrating it into education initiatives throughout the region and throughout the state. Um, because an equally important part of Urban Tide is building relationships between scientists and the community and increasing that literacy on climate um, and ocean literacy. So we hold beach walks in partnership with scientists, and these have several benefits. First, it provides a platform for participants to get training on the program. And we talk about sea level rise, show the flood map, and also talk about natural options for adaptation, such as sand dunes. And second, these walks bring together scientists, city planners, recreational ocean users, residents, students, and teachers. They've been very effective at creating discussion and just creating a place for conversation about how to adapt to rising seas. 
And third, scientists learn about the local priorities directly from community members. So students will be one of the most impacted uh, you know, parts of the population by sea level rise and climate change. And by participating in Urban Tide, it provides these students with first-hand experience in collecting data and helps provide that critical understanding of what it means to be an engaged member of the community. And these are some of our citizen scientists with Urban Tide. Now, why did we choose citizen science for this project? One reason is that it enriches data gathering. This is a project that needs data points across a large geographic area and across many points in time for it to be successful. And, you know, more people means more data with this type of research. But equally important is that citizen science programs bring more voices and more diverse voices into science and build relationships between researchers and the community. Because at its core, Urban Tides is a way for individuals to engage in meaningful science. It's a way to raise public awareness and create a discussion at the community level about sea level rise impacts and adaptation. And I just wanted to share a few photos to wrap things up here that some of our participants have submitted. This is La Jolla earlier this year. And if you know this area, it's usually a really wide beach, popular for servers, La Jolla Shores. Um, same beach. And we also have photos where the water has come over the seawall and into the parking lot that's right behind the lifeguard tower. This is Redondo Beach. Toy Pine down in San Diego where the water has come up onto the pathway. Dana Point in Orange County with the erosion. And this is a beach that I go to and photograph uh, frequently throughout the year. And a lot of the places where I photographed the erosion like this, when I just went back a few weeks ago, they've now added those large boulders along stretches of sand here to try and stop the erosion. Malibu along PCH. And we've put together a lot of these photos into a video slideshow that you can see on the Vimeo. This is the link right here. Um, they're actually really cool to look through, especially to see the range that we have. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, does the app push a notification whenever there is a king tide occurring? Um, the app doesn't, but I do. <laughs> I can notify everyone who's signed up in the database. I can send them a direct message through their email um, that a king tide is coming. And what we have tide charts associated that I also post so people can know what time in their local area. I know that uh, the, there's the King Tide Project that has been going on, and there's a counterpart down in Australia. Mm -hmm. Have other parts of the uh, Pacific Coast uh, or elsewhere been modeling the same type of approach that uh, you've taken? Yeah, so um, we worked with King Tide um, initially when we got this started, and they're, they're really great. Um, what we tried to do is take it to another level to in, implement the protocol so that scientists could, use, could, could get the water level data out of the images. Um, and the model that we've set up here has been adopted in Hawaii and Florida. And actually, I just saw an article last night from the Hawaii Sea Grant program that's doing this. And they actually have really amazing photos. They're having king tides right now. And there's fish swimming in the middle of the street in Hawaii. It's really, yeah.